Chapter 2 The Thief Take Wiles' reputation with the thieves was by now firmly established. Nearly all of them were afraid of him, and so they obeyed him. He always paid them what he had promised, and they knew that he would always help them if they were arrested. There were some thieves, however, who resented his power in the criminal world, and they refused to work for him. In these cases he used to send for the thief concern, with a message guaranteeing the thief's safety. He then tried to persuade the thief to change his attitude and to work for him. If the man refused, he ended the interview with a sinister threat. Remember what I told you, you can come here perfectly safely, and leave here perfectly safely, and I'll keep my promise. But the next time you see me, you'll see your worst enemy. One of the ways that Wilde helped his criminal friends who were unlucky enough to be arrested was very clever. He visited them in prison and suggested that they could escape punishment if they offered evidence. A criminal who told the court about more important crimes committed by other people could be given his freedom as a reward for helping the justice system. The evidence that Wilde gave his friends always concerned criminals who had refused to work for him. He also helped his colleagues when they went to prison by making sure that witnesses against them did not appear in court on the day of the trial. He did this by threatening the witnesses so that they were too frightened to come to court. If there were no witnesses against the criminals, the judge had to let them go because there was no evidence. Jonathan Wilde was often asked how it was possible for him to recover so much stolen property if he was not really working with the thieves themselves. His reply to this question was always the same. I know many thieves, and when I hear about a particular crime, I make inquiries about it. I leave a message for the criminals, telling them that they'll receive the reward if they leave the goods in a certain place. I also promise them that no questions about the crime will be asked. I don't commit crime myself because I don't talk to the thieves personally, and I don't receive the stolen property myself. Wilde was a very dangerous enemy to the criminals who refused to work for him, as the following story shows. One evening in March 1716, a young gentleman called Knapp and his mother were walking back from the opera together. They were attacked by five men. His mother shouted out for help, but one of the five men shot her dead. An account of the terrible murder appeared in the newspapers and a substantial reward was offered for the discovery of the murderer. Wilde read the descriptions of the men in the paper, and when he recognized who they were, he decided to find them and give them up to the authorities. He hoped to be rewarded as a thief catcher. Wilde heard that some of the gang were drinking in a tavern. He went to there with his servant Abraham and found one of the gang members, and took him to prison. Wilde then heard that another enemy, a man called Iris, was at a tavern in Smithfield. Once again Wilde and Abraham went to get him. The man who had been described as Iris was really Thomas Thurland, a member of the gang that had killed Knapp's mother. Thurland had two pistols but as he was surprised by the appearance of Abraham and Wilde, he had no chance to use them. They took Thurland into custody as well, along with another member of the gang, a certain Edward Darvel, who was captured the following night. Soon afterwards, the authorities were looking for yet another criminal, Isaac Wright, for a burglary. Wild and his men found Wright and delivered him over to the authorities. Wright tried to save himself by giving evidence of other crimes and criminals. He told the magistrates about 22 other accomplices and a vast number of crimes. The court accepted him as a witness for the crown. The other gang members were tried at the Old Bailey. 
The charges included the attack on Mr. Knapp and the murder of Mrs. Knapp. They were found guilty and all three were executed at Tyburn on 8 June 1716. Wiles, however, was still determined to find the remaining member of the gang, Timothy Dunn. Dunn was hiding with his wife at home, but he became bored and decided to send her to ask Jonathan Wilde if he was now safe from the authorities. Dunn's wife came to Wilde's office to talk to him, but she did not trust him completely. Afterwards she went home a long, complicated way to avoid being followed by one of Wiles' men. But this is exactly what happened, she was followed. After finding out where he lived, Wilde, Abraham and two other men went to the house. Dunn tried to escape through a window and Abraham fired a shot that hit Dunn in the arm. He fell out of the window, then another of Wiles' men shot him in the face. He was captured and taken to Newgate and executed at Tyburn soon after. In this way Jonathan Wilde succeeded in capturing all the members of the gang involved in the murder of Mrs. Knapp, and removed his enemies without committing a single murder.